Nearly 50 feet below ground, Israel's Magen David Adom Medical Service has opened what they say is the world's most secure national blood bank. With an investment of 135 million U.S. dollars, the blood bank was developed to fit situation of wars, missile attacks, natural disasters, terrorism, and state emergencies. So says Magen David Adom. The center will double Israel's blood processing capacity, which is very interesting, considering the growing population and enabling the country to produce as much as half a million units of blood each year from the current 290,000 units possible today. And for more on that, we want to turn to Professor Ela Chinar. She is the Deputy Director General of Blood Services at Magen David Adom, and she joins us from Ramat Gan. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, Ariel, very much for having me. So first of all, congratulations on this uh, new facility that's been in the works for quite a long time. My first question to you is, uh, why underground? Uh, the f new facility in uh, uh, Ramle, the Marcus MDA Blood Services, is really for us a dream come true. We uh, had to do an underground facility which will be protected at all times because of the neighborhood we live in. Uh, we know that military escalation and missiles coming from either Lebanon or Gaza or elsewhere can reach Tel Aviv and can really endanger the blood center, the current blood center that is right now in Ramat Gan. Uh, this center that we are working in, the old center, was built in the 80s. Of course, nobody thought that there are going to be missiles or war uh, reaching the center of the country. But we've learned throughout the years that it does happen. So that's why we built the laboratories in an underground facility, which is completely shielded against conventional, chemical and biological attacks. So Incredible. we can continue working there, regardless of what's going uh, be, uh, above our heads. Incredible, and I, and I believe the first time there were missiles on Ramat Gan was during the Gulf War in uh, 1990, but since then, of course, as you have mentioned, reality has changed, and we get missiles from Gaza and missiles from uh, Hezbollah in the north, um, etc. Uh, let's talk about blood in Israel. Uh, when was the last time that there was a blood shortage in Israel? I know every once in a while I get a message, and I guess everyone here in Israel, of someone specifically who is in need at a specific hospital and people are called to go and donate. Uh, you have a big blood bank. Why do these shortages occur? Uh, first of all, the shortages that relate to a specific blood type, like O positive, that is a blood type that can be given to anybody. Uh, even when you don't know the blood type of the patient, you can give them O. So we always call, call the O's to come and donate blood. The RH negatives, which are very rare, uh, then we can call them to donate blood. But actually, the only time that we had a severe, most severe shortage was during uh, COVID, during the Omicron variant, and this was January this year, when there were so many infections in Israel, people were either sick or were exposed to somebody who was sick. So we experienced for the first time during COVID a shortage of about two weeks, but then with the help of the Ministry of Health, we actually changed a little bit the rules of donor deferral and we could uh, come back with a good inventory back again to treat everybody in Israel. And it, it was not military, it was not war. Then when we call the, the, the public, everybody comes. Yeah, Israelis the are good donors, right? We're, we're, we're good citizens and, right. and, and we, 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 uh, we, when we're called upon a task like that, uh, uh, we arrive. What's happening behind you? Uh, can you describe to us? Yeah, we have here a uh, few donors uh, that are uh, give a special donation. They give plasma, which is one of the blood component, and we uh, collect it. We can collect it every month instead of every three months. So they come especially to uh, sit connected to a machine. The machine separates their blood, give them back the red cells. We want their plasma, so we collect the specific uh, component. In the other part of the room that you don't see, we have blood donors, people who come and we collect a unit of blood, which is about half a liter, and then we make the component in the lab. 
So it's on online uh, making component versus doing it in the lab. We're in this age of so many technological innovations. Um, hearts are being uh, uh, printed by 3D printers in labs and, and other organs, etc., for transplants. Uh, what about blood? Uh, are we nearing the stage where you won't need people in order to get blood donations, but we'll actually be manufacturing blood in a laboratory? Uh, it seems that it's not that easy. Uh, when we talk about these cells that uh, have no nucleus and the only thing they need to do is carry oxygen, it seems that it's not so easy to imitate them. And companies in the world, since the Korea War, uh, looked at the way of blood uh, substitutes uh, unsuccessfully, I would say, in most of the cases. The only hope that we have is these companies that take stem cells, you know, these stem cells that uh, you, these cells that you can tell them what you want them to do, you take stem cells, you tell them you want them to become blood, and then you can manufacture them. This is still in research. We are all looking forward that they will be able to make it. Uh, but I'm not sure it will happen, I would say, in the 10 or 15 uh, years to come. So we still need, need each other. We still need good people who are volunteer, men and women, to come and donate blood, regardless of if they are Arabs, Jews, secular, uh, religious, everybody can come. And LGBTQ people Get as well, year, thanks to hour. Minister of Health Nitsan Horowitz this year and a revision that you have done in your arrangements for the general population, correct? Sure, because we actually wanted to allow everybody who wants to come and save life to do that. With the uh, explanation that we give today, with the knowledge, education of donor, and especially with the tests that we have, which are very, very good and specific. And every unit is tested for diseases that can be transmitted by blood, like HIV or hepatitis or even uh, West Nile virus. Then we can make, be sure that uh, these donors can participate and in saving life uh, and do that for a patient in Israel. So anyone can uh, donate and arrive there in Ramat Gan or uh, arrive at the new blood bank in, in Ramle? No, Ramle is no, not yet open to the public, but uh, what I would say that everybody who wants to donate blood should go to a MDA site to the blood uh, donation uh, um, file and then they'll have all the blood donation that take place in Israel every day. We collect about 20 or 30, we have about 20 or 30 blood drives where we collect 1,000 units every day wow. from volunteer blood donors and participate. Wherever you live, just go in, look at where you can uh, join us and please come and donate blood. It will be highly appreciated by the patients whose life you are have, helping to save. Okay, lovely. Uh, Professor Elachinar, thank you very much uh, for joining us today and for finding the time to uh, uh, share those insights on uh, your new facility in Ramli. Congratulations on that and on so many more uh, topics. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you uh, for giving us the opportunity to share it with you.